Hello and welcome to this ISM Trust webinar on our new free digital resource, the Primary Singing Toolkit, which we've created in collaboration with Voices Foundation. I'm Ruth McPherson, I'm Head of Charity Development at the ISM, and I'm delighted to be joined today by uh, Voices Foundation Choral Director Charles McDougall and Musicianship Director Jenny Trattles, and they'll be taking you through the Primary Singing Toolkit and showing you some fun and interactive singing strategies to try out. Charles is an award-winning singer, choral director, vocal coach and music education specialist, as well as his work at Voices Foundation, Charles is also vocal ensembles coach and tutor in vocal studies at Junior Trinity, chorus director for Gabrielli War, and directs two choirs in London. Jenny has an established reputation for enthusing children and adults to sing through her work as a freelance music education specialist, as well as through her role with Voices Foundation. She's also the Associate Musical Director of the Scunthorpe Cooperative Junior and the Music Subject Lead at St Mary's Catholic Primary School in Brigg, North Lincolnshire. Next slide, please. Thank you. So before we begin the webinar, just a few things to note. During the presentation, please feel free to ask questions using the Q&A function and we'll do our best to answer these at the end. And do keep an eye on the chat box where we'll be dropping in some useful links as we go. If you experience any technical difficulties at all, please let us know in the chat box and we'll attempt to resolve them. And if you wish to use them, subtitles are available to enable at the bottom of your screen. The webinar is being recorded and we'll share the recording with you afterwards, as well as a feedback survey, which we'd be very grateful if you'd fill out for us. Next slide, please. So before I hand over to our presenters, Charles McDougall and Jenny Trattles, I'd like to give you a little bit of context about the Primary Singing Toolkit. So we launched the toolkit at the Music and Drama Education Expo in February of this year, 2023, and it's a completely free digital resource to help teachers share the joy of singing with their students. And it's been created by the ISM Trust in partnership with Voices Foundation, and it's been supported by the Schools Music Association. Next slide, please. So a little bit about the ISM Trust, if you're not aware of our work. So we are the ISM's sister charity, the Independent Society of Musicians, and the ISM Trust offers high quality professional development to everyone working in the music sector. Through the ISM Trust, the ISM gives back to the music sector and supports and empowers music professionals to succeed in their careers. The Trust produces award-winning events, training and resources which are largely completely free to access. And we have a library of free education webinars, including a recent webinar on writing a music development plan for primary teachers, which has been um, recommended by the National Plan for Music Education for England. Plus, we also have a primary music toolkit, which is another digital resource. And we have uh, a national curriculum for music framework for primary as well. Next slide, please. Our partner Voices Foundation is a national music charity which works closely with schools, academies and music education hubs. Voices Foundation aims to inspire schools to sing and they have various resources and training available for teachers and pupils and they support children's skill development and well-being through accessible, diverse and inclusive singing programmes. So now, without any further ado, I'm very pleased to hand over to Charles, who's going to give you some more background about the Primary Singing Toolkit and how it can help you before we try out some singing strategies. So thank you and over to you, Charles. Well, thank you very much, Ruth. And it's really wonderful to be here today. And I suppose the first question we have to ask is, uh, why singing in primary school at all in the first place? Well, because everyone has a voice. And because singing is, we know, integral to musical learning and is a most extraordinary, extraordinarily powerful way for children and young people to become proficient musicians. But beyond that, beyond how integral it is to musical learning, what are the other benefits of singing? Well, research has shown that engaging with music may enhance cognitive functions that are key to children's learning. Singing has been shown to have a positive impact on well-being. 
It can alleviate stress. It improves children's focus. It has a well-documented positive impact on behaviour. It enhances self-esteem. It helps children work as a team, bond and build a community together, no matter what the song or language in which they're singing. It develops communication skills. It facilitates the exploration of character and expression of emotion. And it is, of course, the most powerful tool for self-expression. And uh, how does all of that relate to the curriculum? Well, as you can see here on the screen, the National Curriculum for Music in England requires that all pupils at Key Stage 1 and Key Stage 2 learn to sing and use their voices. England's National Plan for Music Education states that during primary years, singing should be the golden thread in high quality classroom music provision. Singing is also the focus of the model music curriculum, the National Plan for Music Education in Wales, the Curriculum for Excellence in Scotland and the Arts Area of Learning in the Northern Ireland Curriculum too. So to effectively teach young people to sing, to lead young people in singing, of course, as a teacher, you first need to find your own voice. Now, we know that the singing voice can feel like a very uh, exposing thing. Using the singing voice can feel very exposing. It's a very personal thing. Our voices are so uh, connected to our identity. They tell us so much about how we're feeling and how we are this day and, and where we are. And it's OK to be nervous about sharing that. It is a normal thing to be nervous about sharing that. But we're here to assure you that you're not alone in feeling that. And also that that doesn't need to be a barrier to you leading singing. There are tools out there to help you. And it's our, our greatest hope that this primary singing toolkit will actually enable you to build your confidence in teaching singing so that you do feel able to sing regularly with your students and also to normalise singing in your school and uh, make school uh, give school a culture of singing. And so what's in the resource? <clears throat> well, the toolkit takes your students on a journey from curriculum music in the classroom through to group performance in, in choirs. Now, Jenny is going to take you on a little bit of a whistle stop tour later on. But very briefly to say now, the resource is made up of 14 videos and that's almost two hours of video content. And that's uh, included in that also uh, is accompanying downloadable lesson plans and that encompasses seven full music lessons. And of course, really excitingly, it's free. It's free and available for everyone to access. Now, it will help you explore call and response, pitch and composition, notation, healthy singing practices, leading a choir, part singing in leading a round and refining a song. And all in all, we hope that it will help you discover some inspirational and practical singing strategies to enhance your music curriculum and work with classes and choirs uh, so that you feel truly empowered to share the joy of singing with your students. So what we'd like to do now is um, some short practical demonstrations of the kind of activity you'll, you'll actually find inside the resource. And uh, I'd like to hand over to my colleague, Jenny. Jenny, would you like to kick things off? I shall. Hello, everybody. So we have concentrated on one song and that was done very deliberately because we wanted the pedagogy, those little steps to come through really clearly. So using one song should help you really identify those steps so you can then use it with different songs. This song, however, is extremely, extremely catchy. And I do not apologize for when you wake up at two o'clock in the morning singing this song. So it is called Essequibo River. So let's start with the title. Let's start with that word. My turn first, Essequibo. Can you say that? Essequibo. Essequibo River. Essequibo River. And that's the trickiest part of the whole thing. So if you've got that, you're going to be brilliant. So I'm going to teach you the song and then we're going to put some movement to it. 
the first phrase. Essequibo River is the king of rivers all. Oh, somebody oh, Johnny, somebody oh. Essequibo River is the king of rivers all. Oh, somebody oh, Johnny, somebody oh. Somebody oh, Johnny, somebody oh. Buddy Tanner, now we are somebody oh. Somebody oh, somebody oh. Buddy Tana, now we are somebody oh. Now I got my pedagogy wrong there because I said this is the first phrase and then I remembered no pedagogy I've got to sing you the whole song first and now I'm going to teach you it phrase by phrase. This is a call and response song so I'm going to teach it a little bit different than we would if it was just a normal song. Your response that I want you to practice right now is the repeated bit that comes again and again somebody oh johnny somebody oh can you sing that now ready off you go somebody oh johnny somebody oh okay i'm gonna sing the caller bit you're now gonna sing the response Essequibo river is the king of rivers all oh. Somebody, oh, Johnny, somebody, oh. Essequibo River is the king of rivers, oh. Somebody, oh, Johnny, somebody, oh. Now we move on to the second section of the song and the melody pretty much stays the same, but you've got another word. Buddy Tanana, we are somebody, oh. Buddy Tanana, we are somebody. Oh, your turn. Buddy Tanana, we are somebody. Oh. So I'm going to sing the call bit and you're going to respond with the Buddy Tanana. Okay. Somebody, oh, Johnny, somebody, oh. Buddy Tanana, we are somebody, oh. Somebody, oh, Johnny, somebody, oh. Buddy Tanana, we are somebody, oh. Okay, we're going to go from the beginning and then you are going to sing the response, okay? So I'm the caller, you're the responder. Essequibo River is the king of rivers all. Oh. Somebody, oh, Johnny, somebody, oh. Essequibo River is the king of rivers all. Oh. Somebody, oh, Johnny, somebody, oh. Somebody, oh, Johnny, somebody, oh. Buddy Tanana, we are somebody, oh. Somebody, oh, Johnny, somebody, oh. Buddy Tanana, we are somebody, oh. Okay, so now we've taught the song and now we play with the song because playing with the song, we inevitably, inevitably put it on different parts of our body. And by doing that, we are activating all of the different areas of our brain. Music is the only, only art form or the only form where we really do use every part of our brain. And by doing singing and by putting it on our bodies, then we are assured. So when you are in your um, retirement home in maybe four, 50 years time, I imagine you'll be singing this song. So please, can you stand? Make sure you're nice and comfortable. It's not too difficult. Now, in the video, we are going to do a do si do. Um, I'm not going to teach you the do si do here because I know we can have smaller areas. But if you watch the video, you will learn how to do your do si do. But I'm sure you already know. So we're going to go. Essequibo River is the king of rivers all. Oh. Somebody, oh, Johnny, somebody, oh. And then with your other arm cross lateral actions we're gonna go Essequibo river is the king of rivers all oh. somebody oh johnny somebody oh and then we're gonna sing somebody oh johnny somebody oh buddy ten and now we are somebody oh opposite direction somebody oh Johnny, somebody, oh, buddy, ten, and now we are somebody, oh. 
getting those cross lateral actions again when we're thinking about the brain it moves it from one side to the other we can't get enough of cross lateral actions in the voices foundation okay we're going to perform it essa kibo ready off we go essa kibo river is the king of rivers all somebody oh johnny somebody oh Essequibo River is the king of rivers all. Somebody, oh, Johnny, somebody, oh. Somebody, oh, Johnny, somebody, oh. Buddy Tanana, we are somebody, oh. Somebody, oh, Johnny, somebody, oh. Buddy Tanana, we are somebody, oh. So, we are going to have um, a little sneak peek at how the children do that in the class um, and a whistle stop tour through all of that. So we've got some more fun things to look forward to. I'm gonna pass it over back to Charles now. Thank you very much. Great, thank you, Jenny. I've been dozy doing around my piano stall. I think it was a bit inadvisable, actually, of knocking things over left, right and centre. <laughs> so we're going to move uh, from the classroom now uh, to a choir setting, exactly as we do in the toolkit. And this move from classroom to choir is often the thing that daunts uh, many of the teachers that we work with. Sometimes it's simply the idea of being identified as a choral conductor or a singing leader, uh, or the idea of using, uh, uh, of using gesture to direct a group of singers rather than singing alongside them as we tend to in the classroom. So what I want to do with you here is a little uh, Kickstarter bit of the toolkit uh, that's really focused on how we get started in a choir rehearsal with any piece of repertoire when it comes to conducting or gesture with our choirs. Now, for this to work, I need you to uh, be my choir. Now, I'm not actually going to get to hear your singing today. Um, you can see me and I can, I'm can. i imagining your beautiful singing and your wonderful actions to the song uh, as we've done it so far. But I'm just going to have to imagine it this time. But what I'd like you to do is notice the series of steps that I go through in order to get us to start the song. Now, I hope it will be fairly obvious where I want you to start singing and that I want you to keep singing. And if you can remember the song, you only need to remember the first two phrases. And if that's as far as we're going to get. I'm not gonna sing, I'm just gonna listen and imagine that I can hear you. But I'd like you to just watch what I do and have a think about why I'm doing it. So let's give it a go. Now, if you manage to get to the end of the second phrase there, then we're in the right place. We're going to have one more go at that. Let's have one more go at that. And I'm really interested for you to see if you can work out the stages, the steps that I'm going through in order to get us to start that piece. And then just that little bit into the piece and then stopping us as well. Just have one more look. Excellent. So we've had two looks at that there. And that there is packaged up our little starter kit for leading singing through gesture. Of course, the art of conducting goes much, much, much further. But these starting steps are so crucial in the move from classroom to choir, 
for all of our teachers. So did you notice that I started with what we like to call reflected posture? I moved my shoulders, I shook myself out a bit. I was reminding you how I want us to stand and be free of tension. Now, if we've been doing our warm ups with our choirs and on our classes, they already know this. They just need that little reminder of how to stand and how to stand well and what that free alignment feels like and readiness to sing. And then I hope you noticed I smiled at you. I imagined you were all here instead of me all lonely by myself. And I smiled at you and hopefully creating a bit of confidence in you, inspiring confidence so that you know, I know what I'm doing. Now, as teachers, sometimes we don't always feel so confident, but sometimes all the time we have to fake it because our singers need to know, need to feel that we have confidence in them, that we are confident in ourselves. So we smile. Smile and eye contact goes an awful long way to making people feel secure. And then I showed you that I was ready to begin. It's a call to action saying, I'm ready to start. Are you with me? Because of course, choirs and conductors, choirs and singing leaders are in partnership. It's not me and you, it's us. We are in a relationship together, creating music together. So I say, I'm ready. And also there's something about this gesture which says, I'm here to support you and to carry you. And that is our job as singing leaders and as conductors to support and sustain our singers. Then I gave the pitch. I hummed it for long enough for everybody to be able to hear it. Sometimes the pitch might come from an instrument. Sometimes we're giving the pitch ourselves, but long enough for you to hear it. Then I started to beat time. Show the pulse, showing the pulse there. And then did you notice just before you sang, hopefully the biggest hint that you need to start singing was the breath. And that breath came within the pulse. So the pulse and then the breath. And then I didn't sing, hopefully you did. Hopefully you were singing very well there, I'm sure you were. And then I carried on showing the pulse. I kept that pulse going. And then did you notice right at the end of that second phrase when I wanted you to stop, I brought you off with my Hand with a nice clear gesture to the side, open hand to closed hand to show that I wanted us to finish together and I'm sure we did. So that's our steps. Reflected posture, reflecting that posture that we want, inspiring confidence in our singers, indicating our readiness, giving the pitch, showing the pulse, breathing with our choir, keeping that pulse, showing that beat throughout the song and then bringing everyone off when we need to finish. As I said, this is just a starter kit of conducting, but how amazing that there are this many steps before we've even started to sing and when we're just a few seconds into the song, but they are transformation if we use them. So you've seen them, you've had a, a go at watching them twice. Let's do them together. I'm gonna to talk you through it. And again, you'll see this exact process happening in the primary singing toolkit where we take one of our teachers, in fact, two of our teachers through this process. So let's do it together. So if you're not standing, would you like to stand up? And let's show that reflected posture, that excellent free and open body that we want our singers to be ready. Then we're going to smile at each other. I'll have to imagine I can feel the warmth coming through Zoom. And then you're going to show me that you as a conductor are ready. Then we're going to indicate the pitch. Mm. And let's show the pulse and breathing in here. Excellent. I think the trickiest bit to coordinate and from experience of working with many, many, many teachers, the hardest bit is coordinating that breath within the pulse. So let's just take that little bit there and give it a go. Here we go. We're going to beat four. 
and breathe on the fourth of the pulse, okay? On the fourth beat, here we go. One, two, three. <sighs> Lovely, let's try that one more time. One, two, three. <sighs> Lovely, and let's make sure we're bringing our hands out to the side to show that we want our singers to expand with air, not tighten up or get tense. Great, let's go through the process one more time, a little bit more quickly. Here we go. I'm sure you're doing absolutely fantastically well. As I said, that little starter kit of conducting can be transformational and it's that link from the classroom through to the choir. Thanks very much. I think you can have a sit down now. And I think we're going to move on now to Jenny giving us a little tour of the resource online. Jenny, back to you. Hello, thank you very much for that, Charles. My posture feels a lot more open. Thank you, I think I needed that today. Right, we are going to have our peek at our wonderful resource. Well, I think it's wonderful. So I'm going to share my screen and it brings you to our launch page here. And this is where you will find all 14 of our videos. We have got them from the very beginning which is the introduction to the song. And that will give you a bit of information about where the song is from and um, ways of introducing it to your, to your class. It has also got an introduction to um, the teachers that we are working with. The first teacher we work with is Rachel. Rachel is a non-specialist primary school teacher. She is absolutely outstanding. She is a year five and six teacher who loves music, but no training. She just lo loves to sing in the car. Um, and I'm hoping that that really comes across that she's very enthusiastic, but she's very real. She did want to be with us today, but being a very realistic, outstanding year five, six teacher, she's actually running her own training on um, SAT moderation today. So I'm sure she would love to be here. I'm going to run through a few sneaky peeks. The first one I would like to show you is on dancing with the song. Now these are progressive. So you would ideally start at the beginning and from one, and work through the videos as you go along. And we've got this very handy little option here, which is mark as complete. So if you press that and go back to that page, then you should know what you have achieved and what you have completed to make it a little easier. So I've taught you the song, we've played with the song, I'm going to show you the class actually doing the dance that I have taught them in person. Like I said before, this is a real class and I have got boys in there that were pulling that face that some boys just do. I'm not going to be doing that. And what you will see when I press this video, when I find that part, is this magical moment where they these boys that are very too cool for school they just find it irresistible and you will see a moment where they go ah, actually this is quite a lot of fun and they were singing it in the playground during their breaks um i have been told that if i talk over the top of this video that it might get a bit scratchy so i'm going to just show you it and be quiet <laughs> West life. Okay, yeah. buddy, off you go. Buddy, ta na na, we are somebody. Else. And let's wave and move on to our next chip. Off we go. Somebody, oh, Johnny, somebody, oh. 
Buddy Tana na, we are somebody oh. Now we're going to start the song again with our do si do Esa Kibo, let's see if we can get all the way through. Ready? Off you go. Esa Kibo River is the king of rivers. Somebody, oh, Johnny, somebody, oh. Esa Kibo River is the king of rivers. Somebody, oh, Johnny, somebody. Go for a swim. Somebody, oh, Johnny, somebody, oh. Buddy Tanana, we are somebody. Else. Go for a swim. Somebody, oh Johnny, somebody, oh. Buddy Tanana, we are somebody. Carry on. It's a keep a river. It's a king of rivers. Oh, somebody, oh somebody, oh. Other way. It's a keep a river. It's a king of rivers. Oh, somebody, oh Johnny, somebody, oh. And that was that moment. I'm sure you all spotted it. Um, alongside each of the videos, there is also the lesson plan that goes alongside it. And there are the one lesson plan might cover three different videos. So it's always good to just check if a new lesson plan goes with, a, with that video. So I'm going to show you what our lesson plan looks like. So this is for the first lesson or session. Um, and the learning objectives are very clear. So it was to listen to and imitate song phrases, pitch match the class, to sing as a class and to sing a call and response song. Like I said earlier, we teach the song and then we play with the song. And that playing is so incredibly important because that is what makes the music innate. That's what makes us become an innate musician. And all of those children were feeling it on their bodies. Um, we have the introduction to the song. And we also have got some different ideas on what you could do with it. So we have one idea on the video, but then if you go onto the lesson plans, there could be some extra little golden nuggets, if you like. Um, we talk about putting things in our thinking voice, internalizing that singing is such an incredible skill. And that skill can be transferred to so many different areas of the curriculum, especially reading. So we use that thinking voice a lot. Um, and we have got some... Lycra, we have a video on how to use a big sheet of Lycra, so please have a look at that. Um, I would like to take you just very quickly into the next step. So we have talked about learning the song and playing with the song. And then when my side of things is actually looking at the curriculum. So looking at very specific areas of the music curriculum. We always, in our pedagogy, we make things big and we put things on our body before we start to look at visuals and symbols. So it's all about us first and then we introduce the symbols. So if I was singing pitch, starting to sing, oh, let me do human notation um, in lesson three. On the lesson plan, it has got on there the learning objective to identify and show pitch levels of a phrase, to use the tone set mi re do, mi re do, and to sing, um, to compose using human notation. So we've moved on, we're very specific in what our learning objectives are. I thought it was important to show that these children have done a bit of singing before and they have worked out how to show higher and lower they've experienced higher and lower on their bodies already um and we have some top tips when working with pitch we remove the words so we are just working with something like na 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 so that 
just gets the words out of the way and the children can really focus on that. That is something that is forgotten quite a lot. And try it, try, you know, making mistakes is important because then sometimes you really do see, ah, that light bulb moment. Yes, I forgot to take the words out. Now my class can get it. Um, we can't be perfect all the time and we've got to embrace our mistakes and that's a good mistake to do, to have. Um, it goes, the lesson plans go through very tiny step-by-step -step instructions. And we also, when we come to our human notation, I have managed to demonstrate that on here. So if you have a look, do, do, re, mi, 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 re, 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 do. And I'm very quickly gonna show you on the video that little bit in person. I'm hoping it's this bit. I'm gonna fast forward it. So can we please read my human notation? Are you ready? Do, off we go. Do, do, do re, mi, 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 re, 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 do. Very good. I hope that kind of shows how we use and move our bodies, getting it in every area of our brain. And once that has been done, then right at the end of my bit, we start to look at notation and we start looking at those visuals. Um, I'm just going to very, very quickly show you. How small they are. Okay. Now, can you... So you will see that we are working with still mi, re, do. And what you will see if you watch all of these videos is again, that progression of that big action, shrinking it down to those visuals. Um, on the lesson plan, at the very end, oh, this is very important. This is my notation kit um, that I use. It is a sandwich bag. I've got one here, my sandwich bag. This sandwich bag um, I made up 12 years ago and I've made 30 of them and they are in as good nick as they are now. Um, from when I first started using them 12 years ago. It was a mammoth task, but to say I've been using them all for 12 years is a testimony to it. We have got four foam hearts, 12 plus lollipop sticks, lengths of string and blobs. And these blobs can be anything. I got those blobs from um, my local scrap store. I know those treasure troves are very rare, but the, you can often find them. However, a colleague of mine just use milk bottle lids and they work just as good. And having a kit like that is just so incredibly inclusive, especially for those children that maybe pen to paper is always going to be a little bit of a barrier to them. And by using a kit like this, it just includes everybody and every single child in your class will be able to achieve this sort of composition and they will get such reward from it. So I highly recommend, um, highly recommend uh, investing some time or delegating to a marvellous teaching assistant, getting some of those kits made. At the end of lesson three, you have got some other songs on here in which you could follow exactly the same pedagogy that is in the lessons. We have got, I have lost the cupboard key. Have you ever an absolute favourite with year six? Um, one for the mouse and see you gone. 
I do not apologise for putting a lullaby on there. Sometimes a good lullaby to rock us all to sleep at the end of the music lesson can do wonders. Um, so that concludes the curriculum side. Charles has got some wonderful... wonderful progressive videos that show how you can use what he has just done in his little session just then. Um, and at the very end, we have got this share your feedback because we would absolutely love any ideas that you have got or any queries or questions that you have. If you fill out that survey, we will endeavor to get back to you and we will use, we really will use any information that we gather from there. You will find more information on the ISM Trust and there you will find a link to find more information to the Voices Foundation. And that's our whistle stop tour. Um, I can't, I, who am I passing back to now? Maybe someone can say hello. Thank you, Ruth. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jenny. That was fantastic. Um, I think we're going to have a bit of Q&A now. So Charles, do you want to pop back on screen as well? Um, thank you both so much for your demos <clears throat> and for that whistle stop tour through the resource. It was great to see it and it was great fun doing those practical exercises. I think that's the first time I've, uh, I've been dancing in an ISM Trust webinar. So um, <laughs> well done for getting me dancing. Um, I think what's lovely about the resource, I was just thinking as you were talking, is that we see real teachers um, learning in real time as we're watching the resource. Um, and you also see the teachers reflecting mm -hmm. on their learning um, and thinking about what they could improve or what they found challenging, what they enjoyed. Um, and it's lovely to sort of learn alongside them as you go through the resource. Um, so we've had a few questions. Uh, we had one from Bethan that I think Jenny's uh, written a, an answer to, but I wonder, Jenny, if you could just um, let us all know verbally. Um, she, Beth and asked, can you tell us about where the song in the resource comes from and what it's about? Yeah, so Essequibo River is a sea shanty. Um, no one particularly knows the location of where sea shanties come from, just that there's they're sung on water usually. Um, but this is about a river in Guyana. Um, and there is a whole section on the resource of the introducing the song. And so there's plenty of information there for you to go and discover. Fantastic. That sounds like there might be a little extra bit of the lesson of learning about the, the, the river and, and Guyana. Um, so lots of scope for additional learning there. Um, we also had a few questions in advance of the webinar um, from some of our, uh, our attendees. Someone asked, how do you find ways to conserve your singing voice during the school day? I think that's a really good question because I guess lots of primary school teachers are singing regularly, hopefully, um, if they, they've got a sort of encouraging head teacher that they have lots of opportunities to sing and um, you know that might put a bit of strain on your voice. Have you got any um, tips on how to conserve your voice? Well, I mean, I'm, I'll, I'll absolutely let Jenny answer this as well as, you know, she has so much experience actually as a classroom teacher. Um, but the first thing to say is that I often my teachers beat themselves up about this because they say, oh, I'm, I lose my voice. I must be doing something wrong. And actually, I think at some point we also need to recognize the enormously taxing job it actually is to work in a school that when you are uh, speaking and controlling a large groups of children that is vocally fatiguing so that my first thing is to say you know don't beat yourselves up when you do have voice loss if you're a vocal super user as te classroom teachers are they're, they're total vocal superheroes it's okay if you strain your muscle you know um, so I think that's the first thing I would say then I would say actually having a good understanding of how your voice works and those core components of healthy singing techniques. So what it feels like to stand really well and to have good free open posture and, and, and avoiding that physical tension and to rely on the breath to sustain the voice. Um, those things can really help. So that little bit of knowledge actually can go an awfully long way uh, in terms of, of helping you with, with saving your voice. Mm -hmm. 
And then the other thing to say is that actually the switch between that singing uh, is actually a lot more vo vocally uh, efficient than speaking. Um, we, we tend to do it in a, in a much more uh, healthy way, actually. So sing as much as possible, um, singing classroom instructions rather than rather than speaking and certainly having classroom management techniques that don't involve shouting don't involve raising your voice that you know using rhythms or breath or sounds or some kind of song sometimes and then jenny i'm sure you can add a million things to that well i had the most wonderful little boy in my class when i was a year one teacher who really changed um my practice actually he um he was verbal he was a verbal autistic boy who had lots and lots of barriers and challenges and I discovered that if I sang an introduction um, um, an instruction he got it straight away and he would just follow it immediately whereas if I had gone to him and done what my Senko said which was go and get down on his level and say please can you put the scissors away um, which it worked, but he, you could tell that he was still having to tune out what he needed to get through to hear my instruction and to to process it. If I was on the other side of the classroom and just sang, Sam, put away your scissors, immediately it would cut through and he would just put him away. And that actually changed it for the whole of that class. Um, and still to this day, that was about 15 years ago, still to this day, one of the things that damages, um, makes a lot of the, causes most of the damage, is actually going from singing to shouting. And I don't mean shouting in um, a behaviour management type way or, um, what is it, emotional support way. Um, I mean, getting your class's attention, having to raise your voice over the din so that they can hear your next instruction. So what I did, and it's all thanks to this lovely boy, is I'll sing, are you listening? And then the children and the, my class have to sing, yes, we are. And you still get some that will not join in. And then I'll do a, are you looking? And then they'll look, yes, we are. And it, it can be the most chaotic d &T lesson glue sticks, dowel everywhere, the din. I, I, I know a lot of you will be there going, yep. And the noise level will be really chaotic and energetic, but still a very quiet, are you listening? will cut through all of that noise. And then you're not doing your, right, everybody. There's none of that. So that is my hot tip for you today. Fantastic. Thank you. I also loved how you start um, some of the exercises with off we go. And that just establishes the rhythm, gets everybody ready for singing, you know, establishes the pitch. Um, I thought that was fantastic. Now, Thank sorry, you. Bruce, to interrupt. I will just say that that takes practice, actually. That's a skill that people just don't, you know, teachers can't just do. And it took me, a music specialist, it took me a good month or two of really getting it getting practice I think it's worth saying that that maybe you might not get that straight away but if you keep practicing it you will yeah but it's so it's also so I'm going to interrupt as well just because that's what we always do don't we Jenny we talk we over do. each other um is that what's so exciting about that is that that little exercise there Ruth is one of the ones that um is such a useful bridge exercise when we move from the classroom to the choir because we don't use at the beginning of a concert item, off we go. But we do need teachers that know what the space, what space is occupied by that exercise, by that little intro to songs, because actually then it becomes, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> and as you say, they, they're giving the pitch, they're giving the tempo, and those two things are what we need to have in our head when we start to be conductors. And we give it in a different way. We might hum the pitch or play the pitch, and then we, we show the pulse. But teachers need to have that practice embedded so that they can then make that leap into the, the, the practice that we use as, as, as choir trainers. And I just think that's such a lovely little exercise, that one then, as a, as a bridge exercise. So that's mm -hmm. one of my favorites. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, somebody has asked the question, uh, what can I use to record singing in lessons? Have you got any tips on recording? 
I mean, I, I, I would say, Jenny, iPhone technology, um, you know, uh, with no advertising there, smartphone technology is so incredible these days that actually putting your voice memo on is usually sufficient, actually, um, to, to get a record of things. Jenny? Yeah, well, a lot of us were not allowed our phones in, but an iPad does tend to have that. And I know a lot of schools have got iPads, but also a lot of schools have got these interactive boards that do have microphones in. And you can find that if you Google things like free online recorder, you'll have quite a few that come up and it might be worth, there are those there that have got pop-ups and you you need to sift through those, but you can find four or five really good ones that will record. They can video record you from your your interactive board in your classroom, but they will also just record audio. Um, I'm just thinking of um, GarageBand as well. Garage band, you can do so many, many different things with. Um, I don't think it's free um, anymore. I think it used to come as standard on an iPad. But if you have not got a garage band on a class iPad, it is worth going to your administrator and getting it on because when you are in year six, um, students can use that to record ostinatos and record les and um, yeah, you can get amazing quality um, from GarageBand. And I'm sure there is a alt an Android alternative. Great, thank you. And um, we had a couple of questions about material. Um, so somebody asked, uh, Kirsten said, really fantastic resource. Um, she's asking, other than the MRD songs noted that you mentioned, is there a selection of other songs to use as well? Would you recommend any others? I mean, I know Voices Foundation probably have reams of songs in the bank. <laughs> um, I've got, um, I have got the old Voices Foundation book just to the right of me that is full of um, Mi Rado songs. Um, usually when we start with pitch, if we were following Kadai, um, purely we would actually start with so me songs so um the i i me oh my how i love my cherry pie and then we go on to so me la so me so when we start doing pitch we do there's a step before that um and the reason we, the reason Kadai starts with so me la is because it's such a natural interval globally if you went in any culture around the world and you listen to children playing outside you would hear that na 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 i mean in our culture it's na 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 we all know that and we've all heard it um it's just a human natural interval the reason we um were okay really to start with notation with me radio is because actually when you're thinking about tuned instruments it's sometimes easier to start with do re mi than it is so me la um so i i feel happy even though it might not be pure kadai pedagogy i am happy that me radio is an okay place to start with notation especially if you want to progress onto using it with um tune percussion and boom whackers and recorders all of the different pitched instruments <laughs> great Thank you. Um, someone else said, I'm starting a junior choir for seven to eight year olds and I'm struggling to find suitable material. Have you got any tips on um, material they might be able to have a look at? Very much so. I mean, first of all, um, to say that the Voices Foundation have some free resources in terms of repertoire, which is the Songs of Home, which was a commission for our 25th anniversary. Um, and so that's a selection of folk songs around the world that are all bound together with the idea of nostalgia or homecoming. Um, and so they're very lovely and they're freely available. 
um, and they would be ideal for if you're starting a, a junior choir. They're pitched exactly at that. The other thing to say is to look out for uh, Voices Foundation does have a series of books called Inside uh, Music, which uh, which is uh, the musical foundation side of things that Jenny's been talking about. And they are very well thumbed and lots of people know about those books. But very excitingly, we do also have Inside Singing coming out, which is our choral resource. Um, and that has a selection of songs, again, pitched exactly for that th th that age, I would say. Um, very, very much so. There's material in there that would work very well uh, for, for seven, seven to eight-year-olds. Um, I'd also say that outside of the Voices Foundation, I know that um, certainly a website worth looking at, and they will uh, not mind me saying this at all, but Friday Afternoons, uh, the website Friday Afternoons, um, is an extraordinary collection of songs um, with great lyrics and performed uh, and, and composed by phenomenal contemporary uh, composers. Um, so that's really great. And then, Jenny, I mean, we'd say there's so many but there's so many fabulous books out there, aren't there? But from all sorts of people and other resources, Sing Up's resources is so amazing and so great the way that you can search through it. And and then also, Jenny, I mean, you, you, you'd you mentioned uh, earlier Singing Sherlock, didn't you? Oh, yes. Now, book one and two of Singing Sherlock would be perfect to bridge from key stage one from the year twos to the year three and fours. There's some really, really fun songs in the first Singing Sherlock box. And as the books progress, it more it's more five and six. But the first two especially, I would say, are perfect for that age. Um, also, um, Lynn Marsh writes some of the most beautiful music for young voices, which are um, the pitch range is just perfect for them. Um, I'm going to be quite specific about some of the resources that um, Charles said in our Songs From Home resource there is a song called Hey Sukori which I have done with year threes and they absolutely <laughs> loved it um, so look out for that it's another free resource and it's all there for you and the inside singing one my key stage one and year three choir have just done um, the I think it was three American folk songs I've and I've, I shrunk it down to two which is Land of the Silver Birch with a partner song of um, I Am a Poor Wayfaring Stranger. And the sound and quality that the children make when they sing that is beautiful because it is at that pitch. Um, and I think it's pentatonic, that one as well. Correct me if I'm wrong, Charles. And Young Voices singing pentatonic um, music you cannot go wrong with. And I, I, some great recommendations there thank you the only thing to caveat about inside singing is it's not yet um published but it's but it's coming but it's watch this space <laughs> watch this space okay uh, well we'll try and send you some of those links afterwards in the in the post webinar emails um i think we've got time for one more question um so uh, which to choose? <laughs> Somebody has said, how can I support my colleague who's terrified of singing? I think that's a really good question and kind of goes back to the whole purpose for creating this resource, which is about giving teachers confidence and helping them to feel empowered to teach singing. What would you say, what's your top tip for a teacher who is nervous about singing or teaching singing? Who do you want to go first, Charles? You, you, you go, Jenny, you go. So if I had a colleague in my school, I have many colleagues in my school, actually, that were were terrified of singing. And um, I think showing them these videos that we've done will help them a lot because um, the singing that I do with the curriculum is... I mean, we call it curriculum singing or we can call it everyday singing. We're singing... For, for use of learning, we're not performing. So the singing performing voice, which is Charles, um, is completely different to using your singing voice as a tool. Um, I often say it's the voice that you use in the car that you just don't think about. And you just have to imagine that you're in your car <laughs> at the time. Um, also, it might help them for you to model next to them get them started um, and maybe in the first instance model it but then ask them to practice it so you 
go and teach back in your class and then maybe ask how it went at lunchtime, see how it went. Um, TAs can help, but actually the main resource that the teacher has are the children in your class. And there's usually some really sparky child who just picks the song up straight away. And you can ask that child, oh, Grace, can you sing that? I've completely forgotten that game, that song. Can you just sing it back to me? And by them singing it, they will sing it at a pitch that is comfortable and natural for them. So if you're working with a seven-year-old whose natural pitch is higher than the average primary school teachers, um, then that, that starting note that they sing it back to you is the perfect starting point. So use the children in your class, close the door, maybe give the teaching assistant some job to do. Maybe they can start building those uh, notation kits that I mentioned earlier um, and practice. Model, ask how it went, see if, the, see if there's any little bits that you can just feed back on. And then it's a case of just asking them to do it, to just do it. And you'll find that once you've done it, three or four times, it starts to become not so scary. It's that first time, isn't it? Getting past that first time. Um, so yeah, it's manageable. I've done it. I had to start with one year six teacher, male teacher who was very, very out of his comfort zone. We started with rhymes, raps, and then we moved on to a two note song and he was so incredibly proud by the end of the half term that he could sing his two notes song. Brilliant. Charles, have you got anything to add? Just the, 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 power, <laughs> of, the power of team teach and, mm -hmm. and being side by side and saying, OK, so from what you've seen me do, what, do you, what would you like to have a go at? Um, and then and finding and starting with that asset that that teacher already has, which is, well, actually, you know, when we burrow down into it, it's it's not normally everything that they've seen that they're terrified of. It's this one thing. It's that oh, I don't think I could start a song or I definitely couldn't run a singing assembly. Um, I definitely couldn't teach the, you know, the uh, cu curriculum music. But what, what, what could you do? Well, I really enjoyed that warm up game that you did in singing assembly that time. I, I I could come up to the front and help you lead that. So that team teach is one of the most powerful things, isn't it? Sharing with colleagues and dividing the workload. Um, and that sort of coaching one another through that process can, can be so powerful and transformative for teachers. So that's all I'd add. Brilliant. I love that team teach approach. That's great. Um, I'm afraid we've run out of time. So um, I'm, it just leaves me to say thank you very much to Charles and Jenny for your fantastic exploration of the primary singing toolkit. We're all incredibly proud of it and we hope that you can go away and try out the resource and come back to us with any feedback that you have. Um, and it's fantastic that more teachers will hopefully be able to find their voice and share the joy of singing with their students. Um, so thank you to everyone for joining us. I hope you found it informative and useful and that you've come away feeling more confident in your, in your teaching. And please do fill in the post webinar uh, survey that we'll be dropping in the chat and we'll also be emailing out to all of you afterwards. Um, it's really important um, that we have your, your feedback and your thoughts about the webinar because it helps us to improve our services and offer more free professional development to music teachers. We'll also be sharing with you the, the webinar recording, so you'll all receive that by email and it will also be available to watch back on the ISM Trust website. And we'll be sending you, as we mentioned, some useful links um, that we've shared during the webinar, uh, plus some information about other upcoming webinars that we've got. And if you're an ISM member, please note that you can sign up to our free webinar for members on hearing health for musicians um, on Thursday, the 27th of April. So finally, it just leaves me to say thank you very much again for watching, and we hope to see you at another ISM Trust event soon. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs>